Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're looking at, but welcome or common, as we say in Norway. We are um, so glad that so many of you were able to log on uh, this morning, at least from, uh, you know, looking at Minneapolis time. My name is uh, Ivan Heiberg, and I'm the Honorary Consul General for Norway here in Minnesota. And we certainly hope that you will find this webinar interesting and informative and, and really get excited about the many, many excellent opportunities Norway has to offer American uh, students. This webinar will be recorded and we are planning to make it available afterwards on the consulate website. So wanted to make sure you knew that. Uh, and at this point, um, I would really like to go ahead and introduce the various speakers that we have with us today. We have a number of them um, and we wanna make sure they all get uh, proper time to kind of share uh, their story, what they and their organizations can offer. So first and foremost, we are very excited to have Nora on the panel. NORAM, or the Norway America Association, supports and encourages educational exchange between Norway and the US. Christina Hodberg is Director of Scholarship Programs and will speak about her organization and what they can offer. Our next three speakers all represent institutions that provide excellent opportunities for American students who want to study in Norway. We will hear from Michelle Fredrickson from Oslo International Summer School. Michelle is Oslo Program Administrator at North American Branch Office, which is located at St. Olaf College in Northville, Minnesota. Also representing an excellent summer school alternative is Tata Bamberg, Marketing and Event Coordinator at the American College of Norway. They offer summer school in Moss, Norway, where students can earn US college credit. Next, uh, Dr. Birk is here representing Folkehøyskolene, or Norwegian Folk High Schools, which provide unique opportunities for US students who wish to go abroad for a year after high school. Uh, Folk High Schools offer a one-year program with no grades or exams and cater to a student's particular interest or hobby, all in an intimate setting. And last, but definitely not least, we are fortunate to have the support of the Royal Norwegian Embassy in DC for this event. And Urd Milbury is International Education Advisor at the Embassy in DC and is here with us today. She will conclude the event by, and will provide some additional resources available for anyone interested in studying in Norway. We hope you'll enjoy these presentations. Uh, although we have a large panel, we have set aside a good portion of the, of the hour for questions and answers, and I'm sure there will be many for our panelists. For the Q&A session, we're pleased to announce we also have an American student with us today who will be ready to answer questions about her experiences. Her name is uh, Nora Annis, and she's currently studying in Stavanger, Norway. So please think of any questions you may have for her as well. Also, uh, before we turn it over to our panelists, please feel free to post questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, and we will certainly try and do our best to answer all of them. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Christina. The floor is yours when welcome. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you so much for having me. Let me just get my screen going. Let's see, there we go. Is that showing for everyone? As Ivan mentioned, my name is Christina Harburg. I am the Director of Scholarships and Communications here at the Norway American Association. And I am going to talk a little bit about NORAM and our programs. Um, so just to set the scene here, uh, the Norway America Association or NORAM for short is a small nonprofit. Uh, we're located in Oslo, Norway and we were founded in 1919. So we just uh, celebrated our centennial in 2019. And since 1919, um, NORAM has helped more than 5,000 students, I think more than 6,000 students now actually, um, achieve their dreams of studying either in the US or in Norway. And our mission is to strengthen transatlantic relations through academic and cultural exchange. 
And we do so by offering scholarship programs to both American and Norwegian students. And we also offer free advising for students who wish to study in either um, the US, Canada, or Norway. Uh, we also have a summer school for um, youth and children all around the world who come to Oslo for, um, to Telemark uh, to learn Norwegian. And we are also a membership organization open to anyone who's interested in transatlantic relations and exchange. So that's just a little bit about Noram. I am pictured here as one of our American scholars from a few years ago. Her name is Molly. So a little bit about our scholarship programs. We have programs for American students who wish to study in Norway and get their master's or PhD. So every year we award up to 10 Americans. And what's worth uh, mentioning is that the minimum length of stay is three months, which means that you can apply for support whether you're here to pursue a full degree or just an exchange year or a visiting semester. And the scholarship amounts range from about 10,000 Norwegian kroner to 40,000 Norwegian kroner. Um, which is about $4,000, depending on the exchange rate at the time. And every year, um, the scholarship application deadline is actually April 1st um, for the following academic year, but that would be tomorrow. So <laughs> we have extended this year's deadline till next Friday, so April 8th. So if you are pursuing um, studies in Norway in the fall, it's still possible to apply for support from NORAM. And the application consists of an online application form within um, a software platform called Open Water and a fee of 400 Norwegian kroner. And within the application form, you'll have to fill out personal information, your resume, um, a personal statement, transcripts from any colleges or universities you've attended in the US, you have to fill out a budget form and then two letters of recommendation. And the two letters of recommendation should come from someone who knows you on an academic level. So ideally a professor, a teacher, or a counselor or, or advisor, and they should all be uh, submitted to NORAM directly. So they're supposed to be confidential for the student. So that's just a little bit about how the process looks. And here is a little bit of an overview of the scholars that we had last year. Um, we were very lucky to be able to award students last year, even though COVID was at its peak, hopefully. Um, and we had American students at the University of Oslo, the University of Stavanger, which is Nora, who's here today, the University of Tromsø, uh, NTNU in Trondheim, and one student at the Norwegian School of Economics in Bergen. So as you can tell, we do not have any requirements for institutions. We support students going to a lot of different schools every year. So that's um, not something you need to think about when you're filling out your application. Um, that's it for my presentation, but we're always happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you want to book an advising session, you can do so on our website, but you're also welcome to email us or contact us through social media at any time. Thank you so much. Christina, I need you to stop sharing. Here we go. Sorry, one second here. It's somehow not going. Um, I am just gonna um, go through it this way. Um, so my name is Michelle Fredrickson and I am with the North American Branch Office. Um, and that is located at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. And this office is responsible for 
um, taking all the applications for all North American students. So all the students from Canada and the US. So it's not just for St. Olaf, sometimes people get that, um, they, they think it's just for St. Olaf, but in actuality, I was looking in, um, in a 10 year span, we had 250 university and colleges from the US represented. Uh, the student population ranges in age um, from 18 up to, I've had 80 year olds. So, um, but most of our students are between 18 and 25 and they come from um, usually about 90 different countries. I am gonna share this um, quick little video. I'm gonna actually redo something here. So um, when students come to the ISS, they are actually at the University of Oslo. So students attending will get University of o Oslo transcripts and um, get European, um, it's part of the European credit system. So these are the courses that we offer and it's the last couple of years have been all digital. But next summer, of course, we are hoping that we're going to be back to normal. So um, these are the courses that we've had in the um, pre-COVID. And what happens is in the fall, we make a determination on the classes that will run. And um, January 1st is when, or after the first Monday after January 1st, um, is when we'll open applications and they will be open through February 15th. The requirements are you need to have either one full year of university complete or three AP classes. So like I say, you are a university student. Um, so you can see some of our other classes are Norwegian art and architecture, and they go on regular excursions to be looking at the art or architecture within um, Oslo, the Norwegian welfare state, Scandinavian government and politics, international politics. The gender equality in the Nordic countries is both a bachelor and a master's course. Um, uh, we are not having human rights this year. We'll see if that's next year, but peace research and international development studies are um, regular ones as well. So it's a six week program, usually starts like about the third week in June and runs to the first week in August. And um, it's really, it's called the, a, a little mini United Nations because of having these students from all over the world come together. And the, the thought really is um, international goodwill. And there's so much that goes on inside the classroom, but we really make it fun outside the classroom as well. So some of those excursions that we have, we always have a hiking one. We always have a rafting one. Telemark is one that's usually offered. We have a long weekend halfway through the program. And during that, that is an extra cost, but students can go to Bergen uh, for that long weekend. And then we have several excursions throughout that are um, connected with um, 
things to do in Oslo. So we'll go to museums and such. And then um, we also have an international cultural evening because we have all these students from all over the world. They make um, dishes from their home country. Um, so we have a food portion time and then we have a show. We also have a Norwegian cultural evening. And I can't tell you, I, so my position when I'm here in the summer, cause I'm in Norway right now, but in the summer is um, the person in charge of the dorms or the husmur, house mother. And um, it's just really great to see all these students interacting from all the different cultures. Anyways, um, so if you have any questions, of course you can put it in the question and answer right now, but always feel free to, to email us at iss at stoloff.edu and that is directly to the North American branch office. The other address here, the uio.no backslash summer school, that's where you'll find um, where you can apply and it will give the information about the courses and such. So um, thank you. Okay, um, thank you all for um, being here with us today. My name is Tara, I work at the American College of Norway. Um, we are a small school uh, in, south of Oslo in a city called Moss. It's about a 40 minute train ride from uh, the capital, so not far. Um, and what we offer is um, typically the first year of an American bachelor's degree in Norway which means that we have both Norwegian and American students that come to us. Um, so we have been around since 92. Next year, we are celebrating 30 years. Um, we are a liberal arts program. All of our professors are from the US, which means that classes are taught in English. Uh, we also have visiting faculty each semester from uh, our eight partner universities, which means that the courses that we offer uh, vary each semester. We have some courses that are always uh, the same, but then we always have some new courses. So there's a there's a great variety. The good thing with Amer with American College of Norway is that you don't have to worry about credits. They all transfer back as we are part of UND University of North Dakota. Um, so it's very it's very easy to come to ACN because it is we call it Little America in Norway. Um, and you can see here some example on courses that we offer, but you can also see all of our courses on our website. Um, every year we receive up to 70 Norwegian and American students. Um, we've had a little um, fewer students the past years because of COVID, but now we are, we are coming back stronger than before. So we are very excited um, to welcome more students for, for the summer and the fall. So just a little bit about the academics at ACM. As I mentioned, you study in English. Um, so that's good for the Norwegian students that are then going to the US to complete their degree. And it's also very convenient for our American students that come for an exchange semester or an exchange year. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, classes are small um, and interactive as we are a small school. So it's very different from studying at a big university or college in the US um, here you really get to know your professors, your classmates, um, you can schedule an appointment with a professor if you want to. Um, we, all, we all know each other at ACN, uh, it's a very, very nice environment in that sense. Um, and each year since 2016 we have offered a field trip to Svalbard. Svalbard is one of the northernmost inhabited areas in the world. It's 12 degrees uh, south of the North Pole. So it's pretty far up north. Um, Svalbard is a part of Norway, but there, there are some uh, special agreements um, surrounding Svalbard, you can say. Um, and we also offer a course uh, about Svalbard. It's called the Arctic in Global Perspective. But if you join us for this field trip, you will receive one credit. So it's 
it's a great experience. We were there a couple of weeks ago and I would recommend anyone to go to Svalbard. Um, our schedule and the academic calendar follow the American system, which means that we celebrate American holidays, such as Thanksgiving, for example. So we also have Thanksgiving break. I think we might be the, the only ones in Norway that have Thanksgiving break. Um, we have courses from Monday to Thursday, which means that when you study at ACN, you always have a three day weekend. Um, which I know that the students think is great because then they have time to travel in Norway, um, travel in Europe, or for the Norwegian students, sometimes they go home on the weekend. Um, but now when everything has opened up um, in Norway completely and more or less in most uh, European countries, uh, more and more students are also traveling like Scotland, Paris, Spain, Italy, they are all over the place and they are loving it. So if you come to ACN, uh, you can discover more than most in Norway. You can you can discover Europe. Um, so life at ACN, as I already said, we're situated in Moss. It's a small coastal town by the Oslo Fjord. So that's very nice. Um, you're always close to the water. And in summer, students love to go swimming in the fjord. Um, it's beautiful. And um, there's a lot of hiking trails around Moss. It's a, it's a cute town, lots of cute cafes, and the students have a lot of student discounts in these places. Um, so it's, it's pretty convenient. Um, you have the three-day weekend, um, which comes with an opportunity to travel. We can help you with that. Um, that's typically my job. I help students to find the best flights, the best hostels, Airbnbs. Uh, we're here to, to make your your uh, stay at ACN the best possible. And because we're a small school, we're, we have a very close knit community. Um, the students, most, I would say 95% of our students live together at the dorm. So that is two minutes away from the school, which is very convenient um, for our students. They can just roll out of bed in the morning and head right to class. Um, so most students, they live together and then they have class together. So it's very easy to make friends at ACN. Um, most students don't know anyone when they come, but just after the first um, welcome week that we offer each year in the fall, um, I have the impression that they have been friends um, since forever. Um, and as we are an American college, we offer uh, lots of extracurricular activities. You can see examples on some of them here. Um, they are not all set in stone, so it, it varies each year a bit. It depends on the students' interests and how engaged they are and what they want to do. Um, but that means that when you're a student at ACN, um, everything is possible. Do you want to start a chess club? Let's start a chess club. Um, you can always come, come to us. That's my job um, as the marketing and event coordinator. I help students with all of these things. We had a cheer squad in the fall, for example, as you see here in the photo. And uh, yeah, we are always there for our students. We have an open door policy at ACM, so students can always pop into our office. My office is right by, by uh, one of the big classrooms, and then the student advisor is next to me. So uh, students are in and out in our offices all the time, <laughs> which is great. Um, and just quickly about summer school. So each summer we offer summer school. The past two summers uh, we couldn't do it um, because of COVID. Uh, but this year we're doing it again and we're very, very excited about this. Um, summer school is a great fun experience. It's a great way to go abroad, maybe for the first time. Um, you see the dates here. You can receive up to six US credits. Um, we have we offer two courses. One is called Oslo Vikings to Hipsters. The other one is intercultural and international communication. Um, so we have one uh, one teacher coming from UND and another one from Westchester, and they are both familiar with Norway and have taught at ACN before. Um, so um, during the summer school, we have weekly field trips. And again, the three day weekend. So most students travel almost every weekend as they are only here for four, four weeks. Um, and most, most students are from the US. 
that come uh, to summer school. So applications are open, you can still apply. Um, we have started sending out acceptance letters, but we have rolling admissions with ACM, so you can, you can still apply for, for summer school or for the fall. And then you can study um, for the summer or for a semester or for a year. Um, some of our American students come for a semester, but then they like it so much that they decide to stay for a year. So that is also a possibility. Um, so I think that was it. I'm going to try to keep it short, but feel free to reach out. Uh, check us out on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, check out our website or send me an email um, and uh, we can talk. So thank you so much. Um, I hope to see you at ACM. Hi, uh, my name is Thornton. Uh, I work for uh, the Norwegian uh, Folkehøyskole or Folk High School, which is actually a bit, a bit of a bad uh, translation. Uh, folk college would work uh, a lot better because uh, most of the, our students uh, are doing this after high school. It's uh, typically something you do um, after, after high school. Uh, we're pretty big in uh, in the Nordic countries, uh, the folk high schools, uh, but almost unknown outside of the Nordic countries. It's sort of a Nordic uh, phenomenon. Uh, around 12% of all Norwegians uh, take a year uh, at a folk high school, and most of them are between 18 and 25 when they do it. Uh, but we also have uh, quite a lot of um, foreign students, and uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, our accom uh, accommodations for non-Norwegian speakers. Mm -hmm. um, for high schools, is uh, that's typically uh, something you do for one year. Uh, actually, it's only nine months, but it's a very intensive year, so we've sort of squeezed in 12 months into nine months. Uh, they are small boarding schools. Uh, that means that you live at the school uh, and you have you eat uh, with your fellow students uh, and uh, that everything is at the school, sort of. Um, it's uh, that we don't have any grades or exams. A lot of people are very surprised about that because we're, we're so used to thinking about education in terms of, uh, of grades and exams. But uh, our philosophy is that you learn much more uh, if, you're have a, if you work on your inner motivation instead of the outer mo motivation. Grades and exams, that's outer motivation. But if you want to learn for life, that's, uh, that you have to work on the inner motivation. We also do a lot of learning by doing. Uh, we don't just read about things. We we do you know use our hands. We go to see things. We have a lot of uh, trips uh, inside of Norway or to other countries to to see things, to talk to people, uh, and and to learn by actually being there, by doing it, by uh, using your your hands or your body or uh, making experiments. We also believe that you learn much more uh, that way and not just by reading about things. It's also 24-7 uh, learning. Uh, we have uh, long days, but it's, it doesn't feel like that because, because of the way we teach. Uh, but uh, you can experience days that start at 8 in the morning and uh, and end up at eight in the evening. And we also have classes on Saturdays. Uh, these are the folk high schools in Norway started up in 1864. We usually say that we were, we've been ahead of time since 1864 because of that special philosophy that we have practiced all, all the way since the beginning. 
Uh, you can choose between uh, 86 different schools. Uh, they are all over Norway and even on Svalbard. Uh, so you can choose if you want to go to a school in, in Oslo or in one of the other big cities or in the countryside, by the coast, on a mountain, deep in, in a forest, we have schools everywhere. They're uh, a bit different in size, but none of them are really big. They're from 40 to 200 students. Uh, and um, they, uh, most of them give uh, all kinds of classes, but a few of them have are specialized schools. They can be specialized in in theater or in music or in outdoor life and we even have one school that specialized in popular culture so so but most of them have uh, a lot of different classes so uh, you can choose between and you can choose a lot of different classes uh, of the folk high schools we have um, over 700 different uh, classes you can choose between uh, and uh, as I said before we're old and modern so you can choose uh, anything from uh, learning to be a viking to cosplay cos classes or or game uh, gaming classes or you know we have all kinds of classes um, uh, we have a lot of classes in nature sports we have classes in arts and crafts uh, environment, solidarity, uh, music and theater, uh, media and communications, travel, language and culture. We have uh, uh, a lot of different classes. If you're a non-Norwegian speaker, uh, I would look into the, the special classes we have that are uh, classes in Norwegian language and culture. Those classes are an excellent start to a life in Norway if you want to to go to university in Norway afterwards, or even just to learn Norwegian, uh, you know, because it's such a huge and important language uh, to know. Uh, if you choose to, uh, that, uh, those classes, then, uh, then you'll of course learn Norwegian in the classes. If you choose one of the other kinds of classes, uh, then uh, they will usually, you know, they will talk English in the beginning, but they'll expect you to uh, understand Norwegian after a while. They won't expect you to talk Norwegian, but they'll expect you to, you know, try and understand. But they will ac accommodate you um, until you, you, you can understand what, what's said in the classes. So, uh, a lot of people know that uh, education in Norway is basically free and folk high schools aren't free. And then they ask us, why aren't they free? Uh, actually, the education, the schooling, the classes, they are free because the Norwegian state uh, pays for that, even for, for foreign uh, students. But what you pay for, the reason why the, our schools cost money is because you pay for uh, food, room, the study trips, um, tour you use in classes, laundry, internet, these kinds of things. That's what you pay for. The price is very different from class to class and from school to school. And that's mainly because of the study trips. Uh, some have a study trip that is one week to Stockholm and some have six weeks to Australia. So of course that would make a huge difference in, uh, difference in the price. So if you're interested in more information about the folk high schools, uh, then I would suggest you go to our website. We have information in English there, uh, more extensive information in Norwegian, uh, or check us out in, um, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok. Uh, on the, our handle is Folkehogskolene, uh, all these places. And, all of the different schools, they have their own um, the social media and websites, of course, but they also have all their information on, on uh, this common web website. And that's also where you uh, apply for, for uh, admission uh, at one of our schools. So good luck and welcome to Norway.
Hi, I'm Erd Milbury and I'm international student advisor at the Norwegian Embassy in Washington, DC. So Norway is a small country with big resources. Our system is based on the principle that everyone should be able to get an education regardless of their social or economic background. The Norwegian government invests a lot of resources in education and public funding secures free education for both Norwegian and competitive international students. Although our institutions are few and relatively small compared to many other countries, they keep a high standard and deliver quality education. Norwegian institutions are world-class in fields such as climate, health, welfare, energy, and marine sciences. We consider international students an asset and a tool for increasing the quality and diversity in our institutions. If you are looking for higher education in Norway in general, there are two important websites that contain most, if not all, of the information you need. The website studyinnorway.no has a searchable database of over 200 programs taught in English. You will find master degrees within most areas. This website also contains all you need to know about the application process, recognition and credits, available grants, insurance requirements, and living and studying in Norway in general. You will also find links to all our university and university colleges on this site. The Norwegian Directorate of Immigration, the UDI, handles student permit applications. You will find updated information about the requirements to obtain a student uh, permit, um, which you know here we often call visa, on udi.no forward slash en for English. Feel free to contact me if you have general questions about higher education in Norway. I can also help connect you with student advisors at the international offices of the schools you might be interested in. I wish you the best of luck as you continue your road towards your degree. Thank you for your time and best of luck. Thank you uh, very much uh, to all the presenters for your you know, remarks and your insights. Uh, some really, um, there are now on video too, I think. All right. Anyway, thank you very much to all the presenters for your remarks your, and, and insights. Uh, certainly some really great information and resources. And we can certainly see that there's some great opportunities if you are interested in studying in uh, Norway. Now it's time to get into the Q&A uh, segment uh, of uh, today's webinar. And also it's not too late to ask a question if you, uh, if you have one. Uh, if you have a question, please load those via the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and we will get uh, to those as soon as we uh, can. With that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Counselor Officer Rangel Yeltnes, who will help facilitate questions for the presenters. So, Rangel, feel free to move forward with the first question. All right. Um, thank you, Ivan. Uh, thank you to all the presenters. Um, I think we should first uh, quickly introduce uh, the Norwegian student who is, uh, sorry, the American student who is with us today, uh, Nora, um, who has said that she's willing to answer some questions. Uh, and I was thinking maybe you could just start by briefly uh, introducing yourself and telling us uh, where in the US you're from and what you're studying in Norway. Sure. So hello, everybody. My name is Nora. Um, I'm originally from Massachusetts, and I got my bachelor's degree at the University of Massachusetts, but I've always wanted to live abroad and study abroad. So I applied to a ton of schools in Norway. 
and I ended up going to the University of Stavanger and I'll be entering my second year of my master's and I'm studying biochemistry. So yeah, a little about me. Would you uh, mind telling us briefly uh, about your application process? What kind of steps you took to get into the college <clears> the <throat> university? Yeah, so originally you have to apply through the UDI website. It's a application and then they'll send you a reference code and a list of documents that you'll have to then go to a visa center. I think it's called VSF. Um, I wrote it down actually. Yeah. VFS. VFS. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one in Boston was closed, so I actually had to go to New York due to Corona, but I think most of them are open again. Um, so I gave them all my documents. It was my passport and you have to prove that you can afford to live in Norway. So you have to prove a certain amount of money, um, like uh, your finances, just to make sure that they know that you can afford to live in Norway for a year. And then I handed in a couple of other documents and then I got a letter um, from the embassy saying that they received all my documents and I was good to go. And then I had to wait a while to hear back from UDI um, with the approval um, due to COVID. <laughs> so that was because the Norwegian borders were closed at the time. So they weren't processing any of the visas. So I had to wait um, until the end of the summer for my visa approval. Once it was approved, then I was able to book my flights to come to Norway. Um, and once you arrive in Norway, you have to go to the police station to verify your documents and your passport. And they um, take your fingerprint um, and then you wait a little bit and they will send you your permanent residence card in the mail and your Norwegian social security number, which you can't apply for a bank card until you have that social security number. So when you do apply, I do recommend that you apply for the police station appointment pretty early because there is a long waiting time usually, and I made that mistake. <laughs> so definitely apply early um, for the police station appointment through the UDI website. Yeah. Um, and how did you find your, your program? Um, did you look up the, the programs that are offered in English? Um, yeah. Well, yeah. So every university that I looked at had programs that were available in English to accommodate for international students. Um, I think most, most universities in Norway do offer master's programs in English and actually some universities it's entirely in English so they don't even offer Norwegian like my program at the University of Stavanger is solely in English so um, the program was you know it was accommodating for us international students um, yeah great um, I see we have some questions coming in here but maybe um... I, I should ask you if you have any uh, advice or any anything that um, you want to share with with uh, students that are considering going to Norway. Um, anything that you that surprised you or that you've enjoyed um, while in Norway. Yeah, so definitely it was worth it. Um, I've never lived away from home before, so I wanted to take the risk. Um, Norway is very similar to the U.S. in a lot of ways, but it's also different um, from the U.S. in a lot of ways. So it took a little bit of adjusting um, and definitely I think the weather was the biggest part for me. Um, I'm not used to, I live in Western Norway, so Stavanger, um, and we get a lot of rain. So I think we even get more rain than Seattle. <laughs> so that was a little intense for me. Definitely, definitely recommend vitamin D tablets. <laughs> I didn't know this. And then, you know, like the winter, this is the first time I, I've had a little bit of winter blues. So definitely, but the nature is spectacular. Um, and studies in Norway are a lot more lax than in the US. I feel like, um, like one of the panelists was, I think it was Dorta, who is from the Folk High School, that it's more about um, 
the internalized learning than trying to memorize and then having exams. So that's really cool where it's like you have the classes and then it's usually your final exam. Um, and you have the ability to retake exams as well. So if you don't do so well, no problem, you can retake it. So they're big on um, really learning instead of just memorizing. And then that leaves you time on the weekends to go out into nature and explore and go on hikes, which there's a lot of hikes. It's really awesome. So yeah, a little bit okay. about my experience in Norway. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and let me get into some of the questions here. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, all right. So um, this is a question for Urd. Uh, isn't it cheaper for a Nor Norway student to study in Australia than the USA? Okay, that's... A little bit on the side of this presentation, perhaps. I don't know if you want to take that or. Well, yeah, that's impossible for me to answer because it depends on which institution you apply to and get into. Uh, I I believe I'm, I'm not an expert I, on the Australian system at all, but I believe they might have somewhat lower tuition in on average than American institutions, but it, it varies greatly from school to school. So you just have to do the research. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a question about uh, if there's a distinction between um, being a dual citizen uh, or only an American citizen when you're studying in Norway. Is there a benefit to having a Norwegian citizenship? I don't know, Udid, um, or do you want to try that one? Well, I mean, if you are a citizen, you can apply for funding from Lånekassen, which is a really good, uh, it's good student funding. So that's that's one advantage. Um, that's really the only one I can think of because we don't discriminate against uh, for, for between foreign students and Norwegian students. If you if you're competitive and you're accepted to an, a Norwegian uh, institution of higher education, you pay exactly the same or nothing as a Norwegian student. We have a couple of private institutions like um, uh, BI. It's a business school where you do pay some tuition, but you pay the same whether you're Norwegian or foreign. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm sure there must be people out there with questions about um, scholarships and stipends. Uh, you mentioned that the, the website you referenced um, has information about grants. Is that a comprehensive list or are there other, uh, is it worth, um, you know, to, to look elsewhere also? Um, I do not know of any other uh, grant schemes than these in Norway. Uh, there might be some in the US that you can apply for. Uh, as a, you know, if you get into a school abroad, you can apply. Maybe there are grants here. I wouldn't know about that. Uh, it should be a fairly comprehensive list. Now, it has to be um, noted that because education in Norway is free, we, it's not we don't have as many grant uh, schemes as here in the United States. There are literally thousands and thousands of them, but uh, it's not the same in Norway simply because it's free education. Right. Uh, does anyone else want to jump in on that question um, for, for summer school or the American College of Norway? Are there any resources that you would recommend students look into for scholarships? Um, for ours, um, American students, we have a private donor that um, donates every year. Uh, we just gave those out uh, this week. Um, and also, <clears throat> I don't know what's on your list. I'm not, I'm not sure what's already on there, but um, Sons of Norway um, in the U.S., um, I'm trying to think of, of who else. Oh, like in Minneapolis area, uh, Laksalaga for women. Um, they're always supporting any kind of study abroad. So in Norway. Great. Uh, anyone else? Any other suggestions? No? Okay. Uh, let's move on. Um, how about uh, COVID restrictions? Uh, I know that. Uh, Norway has opened up recently. Is there anything, any considerations, anything to think of for students who are uh, perhaps wanting to study in Norway this summer? Anything they need to know in, in that regard? 
Um, Urid, do you want to try that one or Christina? Um, I'm actually not sure if there is anything you need to think about at this point. I feel like it's so unpredictable that you just have to stay updated at all times. It could change so quickly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That you have to do that. Go to um, uh, the website of the public health authorities in Norway, or e also UDI will uh, also have updated information or links uh, as well. But you just have to look because yeah, it can change. You know, it can change very quickly, as we know very well. I, I think something else that should be said is we have to look both directions. I'm in Norway now and I need to go back and it is going to cost me $250 to take the test to get back in the US. And that's not a Norway restriction, that is a US one. So I think it's important as we're talking to students, just that, that piece that they understand. Sometimes it's at home, that's the problem too. So um, yeah, just, just understanding. So I think um, really talking to whoever, whatever um, institution you're working with, I'm sure that they'll be, everybody will try to be as up to date as possible on current conditions, but watch your own country as well. Thank you. Um, and Dr. may be answering this question already, but it, uh, other people may have the same questions. I'm gonna read it anyway. Um, it says, my daughter is accepted into a folk school near Oslo for photography and social media marketing. She's nervous because she doesn't speak Norwegian. Is this a problem? No, not at all. I, I was just writing a reply, but I can do it uh, now. Uh, it's not a problem at all. We have uh, non-Norwegian speakers at all our schools at, at all times. Uh, they'll probably learn to understand Norwegian pretty quickly because they are with their fellow students 24-7. Uh, but no one will expect them to speak Norwegian. Uh, Often we have the opposite problem that uh, we have students who want to learn how to speak Norwegian, but everyone talks to them in English and they're like, oh, no, I want to learn Norwegian. I want. So, so it's, it's often the, the opposite problem. It's not, it's not uh, expected of her to, to learn Norwegian. And I see that there were also some uh, questions about uh, the time of school. Um, and it's actually pretty hard to say how many hours a day because we don't have a fixed schedule at the school. It varies from day to day, from week to week, uh, because it's they can have these projects. Uh, but she should. Uh, we we usually tell our students that they should not expect to be able to work uh, uh, when they go to school because there can be uh, classes at all times from early morning to late at night, but it's not, you know, these classes where you sit and just hear someone drone. Uh, it's more like, you you know, sometimes it's just that the school is open and uh, our students are so, uh, you know, they want to learn more. So they use the school facil facilities to, you know, keep on working with their, whatever they are, are trying to learn uh, until late in the, in the evening. Our, our teachers are at the school in the evening as well. So there will be a lot of, that, that can be a lot of uh, classes, but it's mainly also what, what the students want. So, mm. but okay. it's, it's, an, it, it's an intensive year. I can, I can tell you that, but it doesn't feel, you know, tough it just it's just that you're you know you're stimulated uh, so, so she'll probably be exhausted the first couple of weeks but then she'll get used to it i think there was a, another question too uh for you doctor um let's see maybe in the chat um box here let's see um and pull it out. Anyway, I think the question was whether you can combine the, the last year of high school with a year in school to get uh, studio competence. Yeah, well, uh, you can you can go to a folk high school before you finished uh, high school. We don't we don't look at the grades or 
papers on anyone, but we because we don't have grades and exams, so why would we look at what what kind of grades you have from other schools? But but uh, most of our schools uh, don't accept students that are under eighteen. You have to be eighteen at most of the schools, uh, so so that there's a limit there. Um, but you don't get any formal education like so so you can't use it like that but what you do get is you get two what we call uh concurrence point, uh, which are uh two points that you can use uh, to get admission to the universities so it's easier to be accepted at uh, norwegian universities if you've uh, been at one of our schools but it's not you know you can't uh it's not uh, this similar to to high school so so it's it's something else okay thank you um and then i have a question for christina um if you you mentioned that nuram is available to um, provide advice to american students can you just talk a little bit about what kind of advice you can offer what kind of help you can offer american students is it in the beginning of the application process when they're thinking about studying in Norway or is it more when they're already studying in Norway? Um, I'd say it's both, probably mostly the first um, thing that you mentioned. Um, a lot of students come to us just with general questions and, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, with studying abroad and um, sometimes you just need that initial push um, to have the guts to do it, but um, we're here for anyone who has any questions, whether that be for students who are already here or, um, or just thinking about it. Okay, that's great to know. Um, and then I also wanted to ask you if a student um, who, who finds a degree program in Norway where they require Norwegian skills, and maybe they have some Norwegian skills already, um, what is the process like for them? Uh, I know there's a, a Norwegian language exam. Do you want to just talk briefly about that process? Um, so there's a few routes you can go and it will depend on the program that you're taking or the um, institution that you're attending. Um, so I don't want to be quoted on this because you have to contact the institution that you're applying for. Um, but if you are applying for a Norwegian uh, program, then you will have to in one, or, one way or another, you have to prove proficiency. So there's a couple ways you can go about that. And one of them is Bergen's Testen, um, which is probably the most common route to go. But yeah, it might vary a little bit from institution to institution. Okay, and that's a test you can take abroad uh, as well. Yeah. Um, okay, there are a couple more questions. We maybe, uh, well, we just have one more minute left, but uh, let's, well, let's see if any of these are a little bit more general. Um, uh, is it possible for a student to get an in internship if they're getting a degree in Norway? Can they can they stay in Norway to do an internship? Or maybe during their studies? Does anyone want to jump in on that one? Well, I want to say you are allowed to work part time while being a student in Norway. Uh, but again, I recommend everybody go go to the site studies uh, study in Norway .no. um, They will have all the information about this. Let's see. Um, yeah, and also I can. Um, you are allowed to work while you're in school twenty hours a week, and during vacations you are allowed to work full time. So I assume that during summer vacations you'd be able to work full time um, on your student visa. Okay, great. Um, and, and I see that a lot of the questions have been already um, answered. So thanks for that. It's one o'clock. Um, so I think we should probably uh, wrap it up. Ivan, do you have any final words? Be happy to. Wow, I can't believe how quickly the time flew. Um, definitely a lot of interest, a lot of great questions. So uh, thank you again, uh, especially Christina. Michelle, uh, Tara, Dorte, Ud, and uh, Nora, I uh, really appreciate everything you, you shared, your insights, information. Um, I also want to say thank you uh, to Max uh, Stevenson and Norway House for all the behind the scenes technical assistance and support for helping 
uh, to make this webinar happen. I uh, really appreciate that. And with that, um, before I close off, uh, if there's any questions, any, any further questions that we at the consulate can help uh, with or help facilitate, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we'll certainly um, do what we can to help you, whether it's with the Buggins testing or, or connecting with some of the panelists or, or any other resources, be happy to do that. So with that, uh, we'll let you get back to your day or evening. Uh, I wanna thank you again, uh, all of our panelists and all of you for tuning in uh, and participating. It was wonderful to have you with us today. We wish you all a wonderful afternoon and of course, a great evening to uh, guest presenters who are in Norway. So thank you again and hope to see you all soon. Thank you.